four from goal to goal to two. 34 seconds left to go in the ball game. This is the play right now. Take the snap. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. I got a question for you. Where were you at 3.49 p.m. this afternoon, huh? Where was I at 3.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, you ask? Well, thanks for asking. Funny you should ask. 3.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, since I live in South Jersey, I was driving had my car parked, of course, and I had a news bulletin come across my NFL app. I looked down, and it was from Ian, the rap sheet, rap report, and it said, Giants sign Kenny Galladay, four years, $72 million, $40 million guarantee, with the chance of the uh, contract being worth up to $76 million, I guess, with possible incentives. Huh? That's where I was at. The man is in the house. We finally got it done. And now we have, you know, now there's no excuses. Um, you, know, you know, obviously, God will, you know, um, of course, you know, Saquon Barkley gets hurt again. Evan Ingram gets hurt again. Kenny Galladay gets hurt. I mean, obviously, if the whole team gets hurt, okay. But, God willing, <laughs> If some of the guys can stay healthy, there's no excuses. Um, no excuses for Jason Garrett. No excuses for Daniel Jones. This is uh, put up or shut up. If um, I said we can stay healthy, reasonably healthy, and Daniel Jones can't put up the numbers, um, we're going we're gonna to have to do some looking. Is it Jason Garrett? Um, is it Daniel Jones not being able to work with Jason Garrett's system? Is it, you know, who is it? Is it both? They both got to go. I mean, chances are, if in this system, if we can't score some points, Jason Garrett's gone. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. Um, you know, now that we start talking about moving on from Daniel Jones, eh, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, we got everything in place. We got the running back. Got Saquon coming back. We got Kyle Rudolph. I won't, obviously won't, probably won't be in there all the time, but um, we got Evan Ingram, he's a mismatch. Kenny Galladay on the outside, going up against the other team's number one corner. All right, not a mismatch, but it's certainly one of our strengths. Then we got the Shep, the Shep man, Mr. Shepard, Sterling Shepard, in, um, in the slot. And then we got Slayton, which will now go against the number two cornerback for the other team, which will now make him better. So, with Saquon coming back, Kenny Galladay in there, it's going to make everybody better. So now there's no excuses. Daniel Jones has his weapons, so now it's time to put up or shut up. The question is, um, I can't see us, the only, uh, I could see us doing would be in the draft if if Pitts were to fall to us at 11, that's a big if, possibly taking him because then we can get rid of Ingram. We only have Rudolph for one more year. I mean, now, now you got, you know, you are tight end for the foreseeable future because unlike uh, Ingram, Pitts actually catches the ball when it gets thrown to him. So if we can get Pitts, um, you know, and then maybe try to trade Ingram. We'll see. But um, if we get, if we can get Pitts, whew, I don't know if we want to double down in the first round on another wide receiver. Past, I mean, if they're in love with somebody, you can't get rid of Shepard this year. He costs too much. But uh, I'm not sure what his, his implications are if you let him go in the next, you know, next year or year after that. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I know we can't get rid of him too. Um, this year, and it'd be awfully hard, I think, to trade him. I don't know if anybody's going to want to, with, with the way the salary cap is this year, trade him, try to get anything for him, and, and have another team take on his like a nine, ten million dollar salary, whatever it is this year. I can't see that happening, but 
Um, if you if you get if you can get somebody, you know, maybe double down. You know, it seems kind of promising. Um, but um, it also allows us to fill up some other holes, though, too. So now you got to, you know, or maybe it takes two to tango, but maybe trade back in the draft, maybe grab an extra second or third round pick. That sounds tempting. But um, we'll have to wait and see, obviously, also, if how much money there's left. Obviously, this, this contract is, you know, going to be uh, backloaded a little bit because there's no way he's getting $18 million this year, not with the salary cap the way it is. Um, don't know what this, his salary structure is. That hasn't come out yet. But you got to know it's he's not getting $18 million this year. So I'm not exactly sure how much we're going to have left to the salary cap. So as far as any other big signings, I, I would plan on it. You know, maybe, you know, get some moderate, you know, very minimal one, two, three million dollar salaries. Uh, some other guys coming in, filling some holes, but nothing else big. I'm, I'm kind of shocked that we were able to sign Leo to Lyon to what, twenty-one million dollar a year, <laughs> and Galladay to an eighteen million dollar year. With the way our salary cap was, wasn't looking good, guys. But gotta give Dave Gettleman some credit. And tomorrow, I'm gonna do a video on Dave Gettleman and. Uh, I have some uh, Dave Gettleman haters out there not wanting to see that video, but I'll do that one tomorrow. But anyway, it's kind of shocking how um, uh, Dave Gettleman was able to get Leonard Lyon and, and Galladay in, in the same free agency period. Simply amazing with the, with the salary cap that we had. Simply amazing, wasn't it? Um, but it, it does also, you know, give us some flexibility. We, we could use, you know, Parsons would, would be something tempting if now I don't know if we're ever going to find out the truth about exactly what went on when he was in college um, but I mean it, you know, he, he's an amazing athlete and if they can kind of dismiss some of those stories um, he would certainly be rather tempting if he were to make it that far um, getting a cornerback would certainly be tempting if because there's some teams in front that need cornerbacks. Um, if they were either one of those who were making that far, um, that would if we get one of the cornerbacks, we'd have, we'd have you know three good cornerbacks, some some backup, good good backup, good quality backup, um, and, and then we got the three safeties. Boy, we would be set in the secondary. Uh, or you know. If they fall in love with like an edge rusher, you know, we'll see. But it does, it allows us to, or, or an offensive lineman. So it does allow, we still got some holes, you know. But uh, this, to get a number wide receiver is absolutely huge. That, that, that gives us some opportunities that, you know, either an offensive lineman, not a tackle, but uh, uh, either a center. Well, yeah, I can really do it and take a center early on. Uh, maybe the guy from Oklahoma in the second or third round. But maybe somebody could play guard, okay? Um, you know, possibly an edge rusher, you know, on a, on a cornerback. So we still got some holes to fill. So I, I personally, unless you're totally in love with one of those wide receivers and they just happen to fall to you, would allow you to double dip, and then you then you'd be set. You'd you'd be set, or if you can get pits, you know, you'd be you'd be set with some studs for a while. So this does allow us to freeze up, you know, for some uh, possibilities. But uh, I tell you what, but now there are no more excuses. Jason Garrett, Daniel Jones have their weapons, and we might even add some more in the draft as well. Where you know, it doesn't mean we're going to take a wide receiver in the first or second. We might might pick one up in the third deep wide receiver draft. So you can get some quality wide receivers in the third or fourth round as well too. They may not turn out to be number ones, but they can maybe uh, push Slayton for some time. Who knows? And don't forget about Ross. Now Ross doesn't have. Ross will probably maybe help us in the uh, return game, but don't forget, don't forget his speed. He, he's he's just a threat. It doesn't you know it doesn't mean they're going to be throwing the ball to him, but he's fast. Got him on the field. They have to respect that. You got to respect the speed. You just they're not going to. Staying in the secondary, well, that guy's pretty fast, but he sucks, so I ain't worried about him. No, they have to respect the speed, you know, so 
It's just like having Saquon out there. Um, they may not hand the ball off to him, but they have to respect the fact that he's in the backfield. You get a good play-action pass going on, freeze the linebackers or whatever for a second, that's all you need. You get that extra half a step, extra step on, on, the, on the coverage, that's huge. So there are no more excuses. The pieces are in, in place, okay? Kenny Galladay is in the house to stay four years. Way to go, Dave. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there, and go Giants! Woo! -hoo!